Hello and welcome to Breakthrough TV with Latricia Corsa Davis. I'm your host and I am excited because today we are here doing a very special series with the next generation now woman. That's right, we're in a season where God is calling women to rise, to come forward, to be who he created us to be. And we have to be that woman right now. We can't make excuses, we can't pretend as if we don't know, and we can't stay held bound to the version of ourselves that no longer serves us. So guess what? I'm bringing the next generation of powerful women before you. Oh, and by the way, they are my daughters. These special young women are powerful. They're beautiful. Then they have something to share. There's a message that's inside of them. And I'm grateful and honored that you've chosen to be with us. Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay. Welcome, daughters. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes. Okay, so let me tell you who I have with me today. I have, and each one of them are going to introduce themselves because that's how we do it here. They don't need great introductions because they are great. And when you show up ready, I mean, when you're really, really ready, they can speak for themselves. That's right. Powerful now women use their voice to share and speak their own truth. So first we have Coach Lillian D. Hey, girl. Hi, everyone. And I am a mentor and I've um, been a cosmetologist now for 12 years and I own my own hair studio. Awesome, welcome Lily. Okay, up next we have Essence Latrice Chisholm. Hey girl. Hey, my name is Essence. I'm an auditor for the Comptroller at City Hall. I'm currently finishing my dual master's program and continuing to build my youth ministry at church. Oh, hey. welcome Essence. Hey. Y'all ready? Y'all better get ready. Up next, Taylor Page Johnson, girl. <laughs> Hi, my name is Taylor. I am a case manager at Vassell Behavioral Health. I work with children and adolescents, and I'm very happy to be here with you guys. Yes. <laughs> oh. And last but certainly not least, Miss Akila Jahada Thompson. Yes. Hi, so my name is Akila. Uh, I am a Justice Fellow of Oak and Buffalo, and I also have my own business. It's called Rise to My Call, and I'm empowering people to walk in their purpose. Let's a little bit about me. Like I said, I'm telling you, I'm sitting with a whole lot of power up in here. And I'm grateful, um, all of you, for being here. So thank you so much for being here. Um, we're going to be having some really, really deep diving conversations. I mean, we're, I want you to be honest and transparent um, about your truths because we, no one can tell your story better than you. So first, I want to talk about um, just what does it mean to be in a, a sisterhood like this? So, you know, we've created this culture of Girl Get Your Breakthrough, which is an international network of women, but we've also created this now generation, the new generation of next-gen leaders, which you are a part of, and actually you're leading the movement for the Girl Get Your Breakthrough at this level. So I'm excited about that. Um, but what does it mean to you to be able to be a part of a sisterhood? Why is it so important to have a, a conversation like we're having today? I think it's important because you don't want to feel like you in life alone mm -hmm. and then you don't want to feel like you're the only one striving for excellence that that the pressure is not on all on you and so it's nice to know that it's other women that's going as hard as I'm going and for their own individual reasons and I think that's great yeah I completely agree definitely um, you don't want to feel alone I feel like it's important when I have sisterhood to have that support that love that genuine understanding, um, lack of judgment, um, and just being able to bring your other sisters up and we can all continue to grow, combining our businesses, our skill sets. Um, and we don't have to be the exact same, you know, to get along, building our faith with God. Um, we just have so many avenues that we can go with other women. Okay. Yeah, and I would say, honestly, sisterhood is having accountability for each other, mm -hmm. being there as a support, but also holding you accountable for what you want to do in life, your goals, what your future looks like. If you set that goal that I want to, you know, get this job by this time and you're not doing any work for it, I'm going to push you so that way you can get to that point. So definitely sisterhood to push each and every one of you guys forward and have that extra support and extra love that you just mm -hmm. always want. <laughs> <laughs> And honestly, I'm just like, it's a combination of what everyone's already said. Like, like you don't want to feel like you're alone. You want to like have people around you like, who know, you know, or have gone through similar experiences or, you know, 
maybe you have gone through the experiences that you haven't gone through yet. And so now you can learn from them and apply that to yourself. So I just like the camaraderie, um, being able to laugh with each other. Sometimes you just need to be able to laugh, you know, to share your story and like hear other people's stories, like building each other up. Uh, I think it's like all of these things. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, it, it, I mean, you, you're, all of you are young. You're young women growing up still, maturing every day, experiencing life new every day. Where did you get your inspiration? Did you have a mentor? Um, was there a woman figure, a mother or a grandmother or someone that you looked up to? And if it wasn't, where did you find that motivation to stay inspired on your journey to accomplish? All of you are educated, beautiful black women. And work it. I know. Right, right. I'm like, whoa, I'm surrounded by power. But where did that inspiration come from? Because I know for me as a young girl, when I was growing up, I had powerful women around me. My mom, super strong, um, even though she experienced some physical challenges early on. My grandmother, you know, she was a pillar in our family. Um, I didn't understand at the time, but I appreciate her now because she went to school to get her doctor's degree in the 70s. And she would say to me, I went, through, I went through the back door so you could stand in the front of the classroom. So what is that inspiration? And you know, how do we, and if you didn't, again, if you didn't have a mentor, where did you find that inner strength to keep moving forward? I would say that I have so my mom in my life, my grandma, um, they were in my life. And I think I got some inspiration from them, but I was more so like just the world. Like just, I looked at the world, what, what's going right, what's going wrong. I looked at myself and I just, and I just kind of learned that way. Like I, like I found things that I admired in other people. And so like, for instance, I'd say, um, this is something my mom and then a friend of mine, um, they talk to people and like they're like, they talk to the people at the front door, they talk to anybody or, um, or they're just not even, my one friend, she's bubbly, but like just how she interacts. And I'm like, I realize that I'm the type of person who like would kind of fall in the back. And I realized that that was just me kind of just like accepting kind of fear and anxiety and like just like, okay, let me be in the back. I don't have to worry about anything. And I'm like, but I don't even like that about myself. And I don't, that's not even part of my true character. That's like something that life kind of got me there. And so when I was like, saw, you know, other people, you know, Friend, um, I'm like, I look to them. I'm like, okay, like it's possible for me too. So I just started with something small, like just saying hi to people. Like, cause I'm be this weird saying hi and then nobody say hi back. <laughs> like it's happened too many times. So <laughs> that's real. But yeah, so I just look at the world and I just you know saw what I admire, saw you know what I wanted to grow up with myself and figure out how exactly to do that. So probably a whole bunch of people like that kind of brought me to where I am today and also finding the strength though to I would say break down and get away from like the about to the mental change that I put on myself or that the world has put on me and like taking the strength and like trying time after time after time again to grow out of that, to grow out of the way that I was raised and to break through that. <laughs> well, for me, um, I was I was raised by my mother up until seven and then I was adopted by my aunt from seven aunt. Um, and so when you think of these two women who had a part of raising me, um, I wouldn't say that they was quote unquote, you know, the educated or, um, you know, where people think, oh, you, you made it. But what they did for me is they both instilled um, the drive to always keep going. And so, um, although they might not have had degrees or whatever you think might think is success to you, they had the biggest degree of not giving up, of pushing forward, and going through you know hard moments in their life that didn't keep them down. And so I feel like that's something that um, that was instilled in me just by watching. It's not like you know they had conversations with me, but just by watching, um, I feel like I adapted that from them. But um, far as me wanting to run my own business businesses and things like that. I think that just came from me. I always been that way. I always um, looked at how people ran companies and I always really didn't like how people ran things. And I would say if I ever had a position where I was in charge, it would be ran in a certain way where it's more loving, it's, the customer service is more like family. It wouldn't be so uppity. 
And so I just always wanted to be that boss and be like, no, 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 no. When you work for people and you work in different companies, you just see where a lot of times people go wrong. And I just wanted to make that right. So um, from a little girl, I always said I wanted to be a boss. I didn't know what I was going to be a boss in, but I always knew I wanted to be a boss. And so it's just funny how you go through life, you go through colleges. I've been through different colleges and all these things and didn't do any of the things I went to school for. <laughs> but that's just like how life worked. It brought me back to my drive of what I was when I was a little girl. And I was being my own boss. And so that's what I did. And so um, I recently just, um, my mentor, when I'm doing mentor, I made it into a company. So now I'm um, at LLC and it's called Let's Chat. And so I just want to really start promoting that because I'm really dedicated to like getting more people to where I'm at and knowing that you don't have to have the quote unquote um, idea of people around you to have that drive. You can kind of just take from people like you did, like I did myself and just push forward. And because a lot of times people are teaching you what not to do even if they're not teaching you. So I just think that's important. Just pay attention to my life, you know. Yeah. So. I like <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say definitely coming from a long line of strong women, all the stories that you know my grandmother was able to tell me, and although my great grandmother passed away when I was young, and not actually having the conversations with her, that being instilled down to my grandmother, to my mother, and now to my sister and I, and. Although I look at like immediate family, I also look at outside family too. Like you, you have you know coworkers who you can lean on. You have your church family that you can lean on. You have um, I've been in the empowerment group. I have those ladies that I can lean on. So I would agree with both of you too, taking bit by bit from everywhere you go and kind of instilling that into yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that way, it's not always that. You know, I, I'm gonna give always give credit to my mother, but I can give credit to everybody else that mm -hmm. has came into my life. And even if it was like a little sentence that kind of kept me pushing and kept it's going, <laughs> it's just that one thing. So I would definitely account, you know, my family, the strong women in my family, and the strong women that are outside of my family, my motherly figures that I have all over the place that, <laughs> <laughs> that if I needed to call them, I can call them without a problem. Um, you know, those like work aunties that you have too, that is like, <laughs> hey, I need to get some advice from you. We don't work together no more, but I still look at you as somebody that I can gain from. So mm -hmm. that would be mine. Good, good. Um, I would say I, I haven't had a mentor before, but I have had women who have inspired me. My mother, <laughs> my <laughs> grandmother, my great grandmother, um, all those women in my life have truly poured into me and I grew up with my mother always telling me you can do anything you put your mind to um, and I believe that like she told me enough times I'm like okay if this has to be true you see something in me this young and I was always poured into throughout um, you know my childhood into adulthood but um, also always being told how important education was how my great-grandmother had to fight and hide, you know, for education just to gain it. I um, learned the importance and I knew um, if I had family that would fight that hard for education mm -hmm. and I can get it this easy, I should be going after it. But not just getting the education where we say, oh, you're successful because you have degrees, actually apply it. Mm -hmm. um, so I received that inspiration from them, um, the protection, the guidance, the wisdom, always being important to also um, other figures like Mama Crystal from Buffalo Prep, um, mediocrity is unacceptable. I still, I have that on my board at home. Um, and people like that, teachers who have, um, you know, come and gone, their spirit still is here with us. And their words always, um, they always come to mind, especially during hard times. So all the women that I've encountered in my life have definitely poured to me and I'm just so grateful for it. So. You know, it's so funny, Essence, because um, when you said teachers, and that's so true because I had a coach. I used to work cross country in high school, and my coach, he used to tell us, um, he used to say all the time, oh, you're tired? We were like, yeah, I'm tired. And he was like, well, keep going. He was like, if you're tired, just keep going. And one day I sat down and I thought about it, and I just began to cry because it's just like, it wasn't about cross country. It was just about 
life in general. Like when you feel like giving up, like yeah. just keep going. Like, and you will push through and realize like that moment you wasn't even really tired. <laughs> you <laughs> you, 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 you were still, still going. going. Right, right, right. So it's just like stuff like that. When you're saying little lines that people say or teachers, like they really do stick with you. And I was like, I've been out of high school for like 14 years now, and I still stick with you. Mm-hmm. Like that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Having those people around you that never allow you to give up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah.